thank you, Cam. Great connecting with you again. Um, I love talking to you and everything around PH360 and personalised health. Uh, for all of our readers out there and our listeners, um, I'm joined by Dr. Cam McDonald, who is a world leading clinician in the, the area of genetics and epigenetics and how we can utilise that to improve our health, our wellbeing, our wellness, and actually revert, revert health disease. So an area that is extremely topical at the moment um, and something that I've become very interested in myself. Um, and recently, Cam, you wrote a couple of months ago a really interesting article for us on uh, what personalised health means for people and how PH360 plays a role in that. So I might let you give a little bit of uh, a story on your journey and all the great stuff that PH360 are doing at the moment. Yeah, thanks. It's great to be back, uh, Catherine, and it's really been great working with you guys so far. Um, I started out uh, as an exercise physiologist and dietitian, just on a, on a crusade to try and fix diabetes. That was my goal. And so I, interestingly enough, went up and did uh, a different type of PhD. I was looking at um, breast cancer survivorship and uh, how women, how their bodies change after treatment and whether we could intervene with exercise and omega-3. And all of that research is, is all about preventing chronic disease, which, is, which was in line with the diabetes side of things. Um, I was in private practice at the same time as well. And I was coming up against people that I thought I was providing all of the, the right information, the standard information that was appropriate for their condition. Some people would get great results. Other people wouldn't get great results. And some people wouldn't listen. Some people would definitely listen. And what I realized is that uh, there's going to be different advice. It's actually appropriate for different people. The second thing is that people actually need to hear that in a different language as well. And some people need a completely different type of support than somebody else. And so um, uh, I started looking at genetics and personalized health. This is about seven years ago now. Came across uh, PH360 really before it was anything and spoke to the CEO and, and founder, Matt Riemann, and really pioneered the use of it in Australia over the last six years. We've educated around 600 health professionals from medical docs right through to personal trainers. And um, a big part of that is, is making sure that people have access to the information that allows them to live their potential. Uh, PH360 started 20 years ago, uh, well before my time. And uh, their, their initial goal was to end chronic disease and, uh, and pain by the year 2050. So uh, knowing that, we knew that we need it to be personalized because each individual is actually going to need something individual in order to feel their best and in order to be in their best health. But how do we define that individuality? And so we, they spent the next 12 years collecting 50,000 cases, which those numbers increase all of the time, uh, looking at lots of different ways of measuring the body so that we can understand exactly what does this body, what is this body doing right now? What is its gene expression? And what do we do about that? And so the beautiful thing about that is that once you understand who a person is and you understand what to do with that, um, motivating them to do it uh, is actually the next part of it. Um, and, and that's where a lot of the, the coaching sort of comes in as well. Uh, but as a result, the science and, and the background that we have on how people develop and how it not only influences their, the, the growth of their body, the, the way their metabolism works, but also even how their psychology is driven um, we've been able to branch that into not just health professionals, but we're, we're now running uh, personalized learning at schools. We're running personalized parenting courses, which are helping you understand your child and what is their biological makeup, what makes them drive to do the things that they're doing rather than who do we think they are and they should be just like us, which is sometimes going to put a big box around our very creative child. Um, we, we also have some really incredible corporate programs happening at the same time because really to end this chronic disease and pain thing, we've got to make sure that we're educating the children to have a great life, educating their parents and all of the people at work so that they can start shifting their health in some of the most stressful areas, arenas that they have, um, so that they can really take some control of their health as well. So it's been a, a really cool journey and I've been very honored to, to, to be um, uh, pretty heavily involved uh, for the last, you know, little bit, little bit under a decade. Yeah, no, no, I think it's great. And I, um, when we met last year, I think the, before I found out a lot about PH360 and we understood uh, what we were doing in our own sort of health spaces, the thing that I think the commonality that we had between ourselves was this area of personalised health. 
I love the area of personalised health and I think, uh, you know, you use the word like language, we can't put people in boxes, you know, we need to be able to, to speak to consumers in relatable ways and that really resonates with myself and everything that we're doing with vitamin C, you know, we're on that mission too, to really, uh, to drive down these chronic disease statistics. But we can't expect, like you said, people to all be put into the same box because it's just not possible. There'll always be some commonalities, but everyone is different and humans are human. And, um, and uh, so the whole area of personalised health uh, really resonates with me. And PhD, you guys at PhD60 are doing a great job with that. The, um, in my experience, sort of as the consumer, the bit that I have been most fascinated with is these body types, sort of, mm. you know, you've got these six body types and how you find out what you are, what that means, and, and everything from how you can uh, adapt your behaviour to what you're eating, to the times of day when things best suit you, to really empower yourself to be better in your wellness is very, very cool. Um, and I, some of the feedback we've had through the blog article that you, you wrote is this curiosity around body types. Um, and uh, one of the things that I really remember us talking about was a lot of this ancient medicine, sort of how the, the foundations of how, uh, I guess, the formula of PH 360 came to be. Um, did you want to sort of speak to a little bit about like that? Because I, I found that amazing, that bit about the ancient medicines, how they you know, that's sort of been tied in to create PH 360 because it's not just made up, like there's a whole lot of very cool science that comes into uh, this formulation that you've created or the, the journey that you're creating. Absolutely. So, um, so the really important part of when we were, when they first, I say we, uh, but the, when they were first sort of determining how we're going to go about this, um, in order to really understand what do we need to do here? How can we define these bodies in a different way? When we were looking at genetic tests back then, that was $10,000 ago. So thinking, how can yeah. we possibly provide this affordably and accessibly? Uh, if obviously genetic tests are going to get cheaper, but we want to have an impact now. And genes don't tell us everything. They don't tell us which genes are turned on and how they're expressing and how they respond to the environment. So um, they started looking back through all of the ancient medicine and uh, whether it would be Ayurvedic, Chinese, Hi Hippocratic medicine, even Persian medicine did an incredible synthesis at one point. And uh, all of these different medicines were actually doing very similar things with very similar thought processes, but we're all doing them completely independently with no communication. And so they, they saw this commonality that there are, um, that there are some governing principles that drive development and drive the way that we behave and we respond to the environment. And so we went on then to say, right, well, that's great, but how can we really quantify that? Um, and how can we understand that, you know, this, you know, in Ayurvedic language, this Pitta type, which is the fiery type, um, how can we define that in Western medicine? And essentially, um, what they've found is that, that the classic Ayurvedic Pitta type um, is in some way, shape and form related to a, a body that has developed more from the mesoderm layer of the embryo. And so uh, in the embryo, there are three different layers and they're growing different organs. And if, and depending on your genetics and the environment, you'll choose one or two of those layers to grow more predominantly. And this sets off a whole lot of changes. Um, one of which, let's say that we take the, the mesoderm, the mesoderm houses all of the, the, the ligaments, the cartilage, the bones, the tendons, the blood, the heart, everything that you need to move and move quickly. And so if you put more energy into the growth of that layer, which some embryos experience, you end up with a body that has more adrenaline release because the adrenal glands are found in that layer too. We actually see a uh, slightly higher levels of testosterone. And so from that dominance of that layer, we actually see a more fiery competitive type body because those hormones influence your brain. And it also influences your body shape, which is a shorter femur and a longer trunk and uh, shorter hands, thicker hands as well. Um, those type, those phenotype changes or the, the body, comp, body shape changes actually occur based off embryological foundings and, uh, the Ayurvedics and the Chinese medicine, um, they actually define these, these same things, but they define it with completely different language. And so we, we really wanted to make sure that this agreed with Western science. 
And so there was a yep. cross correlation. In fact, some of the things from Ayurveda were thrown out. Some of the things from Chinese medicine were thrown out. Some of the things from Western medicine that weren't as, as useful weren't, weren't kept in either. But essentially, we've, we've synthesized this model that actually encapsulates all of the knowledge that we have gathered over the last 5,000 years, rather than it just be the last review, um, which is where we, we spend a lot of our time as well. There's an incredible amount of wisdom in ancient times. And uh, we've really tapped into that to understand well, where can we start this foundation. And so um, we have this, these really incredible uh, findings now, and I'll just describe two different people so that people can get a bit of a sense of that. Um, one person, and if it's useful, um, and you can edit this out if you need to, if, I've actually got some slides that show this. Do you want me to use those or not worry? Yeah, sure. Because yeah. yep. um, this is really, I find um, uh, all of this, this is just so fascinating. Um, like, you know, really understanding what body type are you and what does that mean and, yeah. and how, and the, the way that PH360 get you to... Um, find out that information about yourself and, you know, put it through your system and the algorithms and just fit out what you are. It's very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go through this a little bit. And so uh, this, this screen right here is the breakdown of how the embryo forms. You've got your central nervous system and skin in the ectoderm. You've got the, all the bone, the cartilage, the ligaments, tendons, the movement and the reproductive organs are found in the mesoderm. And then in the yeah. endoderm are your metabolic control organs, your thyroid, your liver, uh, your GI tract, your digestion, your pancreas, your lungs. So this is a body that's very, very good at digesting and controlling metabolism. This is the organs that are very good at moving and moving quickly. These are the organs that are very good at uh, sensing and analyzing the environment, the nervous system and the skin. And so the way yeah. that plays out, um, we have different bodies actually project out of these derm layers. So if you've got a dominance of your... Um, nervous tissue here but you didn't spend as much time developing your mesoderm or your endoderm layers you end up with a body that's got a lot of neural tissue very sensitive skin is a lot finer in the development of their muscle tissue they have a lot less fat and they also have a slightly weaker digestion we end up with a, a ballet like dancer um, this ballet dancer uh, has a very very active mind and a, a relatively um, uh, inactive or not a relative, but a, a weaker digestive system. And so they can end up with a little bit of stomach soreness. We end up with someone who's thinking all of the time, constantly with a sore stomach. And these people are almost uh, also a little bit more prone to immune suppression as well. Whereas these guys right here, the mesoderm, you can see the shorter femur, you can see the more muscularity that comes through from their testosterone dominance. And so we have a, a different body uh, coming from different, different places within the, the derm layers. And so how that comes together, the mesoderm projects forward these higher adrenaline and testosterone levels, which makes for shorter femurs, longer trunk. It also makes you more competitive and it also makes you respond to things faster and more intensely. And so um, all of these things come together. And what we would see with a, a person with a, a more dominant mesoderm layer, they are going to be more likely to tolerate morning exercise because the adrenaline that they thrive in, these, is, these are hormones yep. that they really thrive in, are peaking in the morning with their cortisol levels to wake them up. Uh, and so they take advantage of those because they actually love those hormones. It makes them feel normal. And so getting up and using their energy first thing in the morning and just hitting the work and getting stuck into it and being really energized and annoying the hell out of everybody else who's waiting for their coffee to hit their brain before they're <laughs> actually ready to, to socialize with people. This is a person who's very ready to, to get into it first thing and really thrive with that. It actually follows their natural energy levels. They also have this metabolism that's a little bit heightened. They need a lot of exercise because of their, their mesoderm do, uh, needs. Um, and as a result, they get hangry. This is, hangriness is a real thing for this person. They have a metabolism that turns over every two to three hours. And so making sure that they have snacks on hand will be the difference between them snapping at somebody and being incredibly nice to them just by having a little bit of food in their belly. It's amazing how, how consistent it is. But because they've also got this adrenaline and testosterone dominance, they search for adrenaline and testosterone as part of their home base. This is home for them, adrenaline and testosterone. So they search for risk. They search for variety and competition. They're walking next to their grandma on the path 
and they definitely make sure that they beat their grandma because they can't help it because they're just naturally competitive unless they're obviously being competitive to be the most caring person in the world for their grandma, in which case they do whatever they have to do to take care of their grandma. But this also makes a person who's always on the go. They, they respond very quickly with their adrenal system. They say, yeah, I can do that. Yep. I can do that. Yep. I can do that. Yep. I can do that. And then all of a sudden, They've got a list 400 things long and they haven't really started anything, but they've said yes to everything and they're just spinning a hundred plates. So not only the really important thing that we see here is not only is it a, a, a size and shape of the body because these hormones change the way your body develops, but also it changes the way your brain responds to the environment. It changes the way your metabolism works. This is where from this lens, we actually get an understanding of what's going to be uh, really, really appropriate for this whole body. Um, and, and how's it, how's its health going to be influenced? Whereas you have a completely different body. Um, and we have the diplomat here and the, the size and shape of this body can vary from someone like the rock right down to Nicole Kidman. So you can have a yes. very, very, uh, different size and shape. And this is because they're combining the ectoderm and the endoderm. You'll know someone like this. They've got a, instead of being risk pro risk with their adrenaline and testosterone, they're much more interested in the time and space of things. So serotonin is about finding reward. And if you've got plenty of serotonin, it regulates your mood. It keeps you calm. It can chilled and just enjoying life. Um, what's really interesting is this body is searching for serotonin all of the time. And because if they don't get it, they feel low. Yeah. And so as a result, they like to make sure they consider everything in their environment before they make a decision. The activator, on the other hand, the mesomorph is just, let's do this and we'll work it out as we go along because I'll just fuel it from adrenaline. This body is saying, I really need to take time to consider all of this. I need my serotonin at the end of it. I need to make sure it's a good decision. Um, I really need to make sure that I've got uh, everything scheduled. I'd prefer to have a late start in the morning. Their metabolism is completely different and they need a late start in the morning. They're very thorough. They don't start a million projects. They finish one or two very, very thoroughly. And in, in a workplace, understanding that dynamic is incredibly important. So we have this system that doesn't feed every two, three hours, but rather they can go five to six hours without a meal. They, yeah. can, they should be waking up or having a really easy morning till about nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. And the, the mesomorph or the activator is just going to be absolutely hammering them. And they're not going to be wanting to people at all before 10 a.m., because their body is just set back that little bit, but then they'll work maybe till eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, be incredibly energized, uh, but people, but that's not work time. And so they don't get to take advantage of their best work time. And this is where social jet lag happens for this person as well, where the culture is telling them you have to be awake and at work by eight. Um, and only recently we're working with a school and all of their teachers, and they've got probably 50 diplomats out of 80 staff. And this and school starts at eight and everyone is in a frantic chaotic mess because it's not their best time to be doing things. And it's fascinating how that dynamic plays out into their stress and how that stress plays out with the students as well. And, and this is one of the most fascinating things that we see is that just even the time of day and understanding that can be the difference between getting on with someone and not getting on with someone because they're not ready for interaction or they've come tired because they spent all of their energy in the morning. So um, that's a little example of how the, I guess the ancient medicine has been cross-referenced against what we actually know from Western medicine and embryology, how that embryology actually plays a, a projecting role throughout our whole life, and then how that governs what our body's going to need to be in its best state of health and, and how those two things are drastically different for different people. And, you know, we often, and I even talking to someone the other day, they said, oh, look, I heard on the radio that we should really be skipping all of our snacks. And I said, well, what was the context of that? Oh, they were talking about diabetes. And I was talking to someone who was not at risk of diabetes and had a completely different uh, disease risk profile. And I said, this advice is not for you, but we hear this advice. And so we apply it when in fact, it's actually not for you. Um, and so this is one thing that we're really striving to do is make sure that everybody has in the palm of their hands on their phone, the exact yeah. information as to, what vegetables, what meats, when should I be working? When should I be waking? When should I be exercising? And that's essentially what the, the PH360 application does. And I think that's, uh, and yeah, I found that, um, so being through the journey and I've got my profile and, um, and all the detail to every category. And I think it's, 
yeah, it's extremely personalised um, and more, uh, far more detailed than I ever, ever expected. And so for me as the crusader, the most important thing for me out of my uh, six things, it's the mind. Um, and for me, social is at the bottom, but the mind is at the top. And, um, you know, I, and I think you, you, you might be a crusader as well, um, Cam. I, I feel like, you know, I'm always on the go. I'm always thinking about things and I have to be careful I don't take on too many things. And I, like for me, I, um, I do need to eat throughout the day. And there are certain things that when I eat more of, uh, things that are high in minerals and vitamins, uh, you know, that really benefits me. I actually crave that sort of stuff. Um, and I think you've said before that that's really good because it helps to, you know, fuel that energy that you're trying to put into your mind. Um, yep. And yet my business partner, uh, Casey, she's the diplomat. So, you know, she's, uh, yeah, quite different. And um, and everything that you sort of just explained about the diplomat um, really resonates with her. And, and I can sort of see that. And um, you know, even for the exercise at the time of the day, for her, you know, she's better off um, putting her, all her energy into exercising towards the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and she's been doing that and been getting some great results. So, you know, I think uh, the comment that she made that resonated with me that the, the PH360 experience gave her was that it gave her, um, it made her feel okay to say, actually, that just doesn't work for me. <laughs> Like, I used to feel really bad that I felt like the black sheep for thinking, what's wrong with me? Why, why don't I feel the same way in this situation like other people? But actually understanding a little bit more about yourself and not, you know, um, you know, food is one and, um, you know, maybe we like to exercise, but really like your environment, like everything that turns you on and off gives you permission to say, actually, no, that doesn't work for me. And that's okay because I know that it just works better for me over here. So that was a comment that I really remember her sort of saying is that just I feel I have permission to say it's okay, that yes. that just doesn't work, <laughs> that it doesn't work for me and I understand why it actually doesn't work. Um, and I'm sure you get a lot of feedback actually like that, people sort of saying, ah, oh, now that makes sense. Totally. And this is the thing, probably the most relieving thing. Like I've, I was in practice, I've seen over a thousand clients myself and it is just so profound what happens off the back of this. But one of the things that I find incredibly fulfilling is when someone goes, I get permission to be myself. Yeah. I am a slow starter in the morning. I'm not talking about myself right now, but I don't like doing people in the morning. I've given myself permission to sleep until seven, not six. And I feel so much better. Whereas before the culture would actually make you feel like you're, you're lazy when in fact they now have all of this energy at the back end of the day that other people don't. And that permission is so powerful. And there's, there's one particular body, the guardian, the guardian is the most nurturing body. They've also got the strongest body, the biggest body. They've got the biggest amount of muscle tissue, the biggest amount of fat tissue and all day long, they are just taking care of people. Their hormones make them focus on everybody else's goals. Um, and they are so selfless and so tireless and helping them understand how powerful that is. And it's actually driven within them. They, they have this realization of, oh, I'm not being drained of energy. I'm just so energized at taking care of people. Like there are a hundred people that I nurture every single week. And I am, I'm still energized at the end of the week. I'm like, they realize how strong they are and how incredible they are um, rather than just feeling like the world's taking from them the whole time. Whereas crusaders don't have that issue. Crusaders are oppositely driven prolactin for the guardian, which is very much about everybody else's goals. Yep. Dopamine, which I'm a crusader as well. So I can talk about crusaders. Um, yep. Dopamine is very much about my goal is this this is the way that I'm going. Everything that is inefficient, please get out of my way because <laughs> the only thing that I have going right now is my goal. And when I don't mean actually fuels your journey towards the goal so that when you get to the end of the goal, your brain immediately searches for the next thing because yeah. otherwise it won't get dopamine. If you have this big celebration and the serotonin hit, that suppresses your dopamine and you don't feel like you anymore. But this is a really yeah. important thing crusaders need to learn is that if you're just running on dopamine the whole time, you do yourself an injury. And this is why in Crusaders, we see very early heart attacks for guys who have just worked their guts out their whole life. Same with women. 
Uh, but we often we see predominantly more male crusaders than we do females based on the way the body structure is. Um, and what they needed to do is they actually need to take a rest in between their task achievement and just say, Whew, that was awesome. Big celebration. Let's actually relax for a second. Let's re-energize and let's go again. Um, so the, the differences in people and how they're motivated, but once again, it gives the crusader permission to think, I just want to go and fix this. So I'm just going to go and fix it because that's what makes me feel great. And it, I love that you want to stay behind and take care of everyone. That's awesome. I'm going to go off and do this. And everybody actually understands what they really love doing. And when they do it, everybody actually loves life, which is a really big, important thing that we see, not just in the schools, but in family dynamics, but also in the workplaces as well as people working in their natural strengths. And I think it's an interesting, I love the fact that you've, uh, that you've got something started in the school space and really looking forward to hearing more about that as, you know, as 2020 um, evolves. But I think the workplace is a really interesting place because we're adults doing lots of different things. We do need to conform in certain ways, uh, but we are all a little bit different. And I think it's great to see that, you know, workplaces at the moment are putting a lot of energy into what sort of programs can we have for our staff? Like how can we support whether it's health, wellness, well-being, like what can we do? And I think when people um, truly understand themselves, and I think the PH360 journey really helps you to become more self-aware about yourself. And the more self-aware you can become of yourself, the more you can look after yourself, the more you can perform at your up level, but the better you interact with the people around you because workplaces are communities and the, the, the companies that are thriving really well have got a great sense of community and it just sort of, you know, they find that rhythm and I think if businesses can continue to find that rhythm around what makes their community tick, which actually really all comes back to how self-aware one is about themselves and if your workplace can support that, that is really honestly truly powerful um and so much can be achieved on so many different levels so um i'm not surprised that you're doing lots of very cool stuff actually in the corporate business space yeah it's a, and it, that piece right there that you're talking about the self-awareness piece is exactly what it is it's i understand who i am now and then there's yeah. another beautiful piece to it as well is as your stress levels increase even if you have the, the mental knowledge of of who you are your ability to exercise that significantly decreases. And so yeah. as, you, as you stress more, your self-awareness drops because you go into more survival mode. And so mm -hmm. what we talk about, sometimes for some people, that very skinny sensor, the, the, the ectomorph, the very finely boned one, they actually get very stressed by air conditioning being too cold. And they, mm -hmm. they're always rugged up through the day to make sure that they're warm enough. Um, and if they get cold, their brain productivity goes down and they become very less, or much less self-aware whereas another person the connector which is our meso endomorph combination um yep. the uh the the connector actually needs social connection to feel normal and to be able to verbalize all of their thoughts and if they can't then they feel isolated and go into anxiety or worry whereas the sensor would absolutely love time by themselves and and that like sort of very alone time that you know locked off in a room just working on their own things and not being disturbed by anyone and so even an open plan office i was discussing with a client just the other day a sensor sitting in an open plan office just completely bombarded by the day just blowing her away because there's people talking over here there's different air temperature changes coming through here she can't focus on her list and then she goes away to a nice quiet room and all of the stress is relieved. And then in the same hour, I had a conversation with a connector saying, oh, I've started spending more time by myself because I, I'm just so transparent that everything I, I think just comes out because that's connectors. They want to connect. So they just say everything that's on their mind. But she's been, she's been saying it without uh, any kind of safety net. And so she's been putting some people off and it's made her retreat and she feels really bad. And my encouragement to her was go and find people who you can just say whatever you want to like yeah. and have that friendship and trust. And then after you've had that good vent, then go and interact. The more people that you're around, the better that you'll feel. So two people, same issue, completely different treatment. In fact, opposite treatments. Yeah. Um, and, prof and in some, before we they even got outside the room, they said, 
I already feel so much better because I now like I'm confirming the things that I kind of already knew about myself, but it's, it's so deep and so intuitive. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's amazing. And one, it was interesting. A couple of weeks ago, I, uh, I've started posting some interesting stats around um, preventative health and the workplace and really the workplace um, and the world health organization supports this has really said the place for people to accomplish more in their health to really to get a sense of um, like uh, that those messages that they need to be to accomplish more in health is actually in the workplace the workplace is the prime place to allow people to uh, to go on that journey to bettering their health so so being able to do it in the workplace I think is um, is yeah it's pretty powerful if um, someone wanted to find out a little bit more about PH360 and they wanted to put themselves on that journey to find out their body type and becoming more self-aware for themselves. Where should they go? Yeah. Awesome. So the best thing, the best thing about PH is that you can actually conduct the assessment at home if you would like. Um, this is it's, we wanted to make it accessible and affordable to everyone. We've trained up hundreds of, of health professionals, uh, particularly in Australia, New Zealand, but also uh, in Asia, North America as well. Uh, to help you along that journey. So if you wanted to initially find some more information and get some resources and see some more science, um, you can, the, the link below this video will be the one for that. That'll take you along to the PA360 website. Um, there you can either jump on board with a, a 10 day starter pack, which is just, it takes you through a bit of an intensive personalized journey for yourself. Um, or you can, you can grab a, a membership to PH360. Um, what I would really suggest that when you do something like that, is that you're going to get just slightly more clarity and also uh, a little bit or a faster result if you, you engage with some level of support as well. And we offer a number of levels of support. One is there's a free small group coaching call every single month that essentially you can, you can dial into, you can watch all of the recordings as well, and you can actually start getting some information on how you might navigate uh, the platform or understand more about it generally. Um, we have health professionals who are trained that will definitely uh, offer you an initial session um, where you can actually get on board it and really understand it. They can help you with the measures as well. Um, and if you want, if you have any particular considerations, whether it be medical or any, any questions like that, once you've gone through and had a look at the website, you can just email support at ph360.me uh, and that email will always find its home. So we've got a, a really nice support system there that's, regardless of what your request is, we'll make sure that the, the right people find you and you can have the experience that you want. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. And, um, and uh, we'll also, you know, on the things that we're doing at Vitamin C, we'll also provide some handy links to make sure it's really easy to find everyone at PH360. But, um, but thank you for your time. I know you're a very, very busy person. And, um, but I've really enjoyed um, you sharing the story. And I think uh, a story means everything to everyone. Uh, people really resonate with the stories. And, um, and I know that the curiosity we had from the blog that you wrote earlier on um, will, you know, our discussion will really feed that now and hopefully get a few people on their own personal H360 uh, journey. But thank you. And um, yeah, really looking forward to hearing about all the very cool stuff that you guys are doing throughout uh, 2020. One uh, area I'm very keen to, um, and we should do another little uh, um, interview with this, is around uh, the work you're doing with the school and all the new work you're actually doing with parents and their children, uh, a really interesting area. Um, I'm curious to actually do it with my children. I haven't done it yet, but it's super curious. So I'd, uh, we should, as the year progresses, actually pick up to find out how everything is going in the, in the kids and adolescent space with mum and dad. Yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's spectacular. I think I, I didn't really have much importance on it in my mind until I had a very, very active, very different to me connector son who's super social, nothing needs to mean anything whereas everything needs to mean something to me because i'm very purpose driven and very focused yeah. and it's just a completely different way of how i need to interact with my son so that he feels safe in who he is and that's every bit of the journey whether it be at school or parenting is that yeah. these children get to you live in the environment that allows their natural strengths to thrive and their stress to be minimized and they actually get to express themselves and be seen as themselves as a great thing 
it's there is no greater gift than you can give someone that is uh, complete acceptance and uh, and actually a unconditional sort of um, love really of of what their natural strengths are and how they go about achieving those. So it's personally for me, it's been incredible. The people that we've taken through the parenting course and also the schools that's now kicked off, the insights that people have had in those leadership roles have been it's been mind blowing. So we're really excited about rolling that out over this year, a world's first personalized learning with, with biology at the core of it. Um, and so watch, watch this space for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Looking forward to having more conversations uh, about that throughout the year. Mm. All right. So I will, um, I'm going to let you get back to your super busy um, agenda and uh, all the, the great things that you're doing and um, thank you for your time. And we will, we'll talk again very soon. Thanks so much, Kath. The crusade continues. That's it. Crusaders all the way. <laughs> <laughs> See you.